so good to me Before I took a breath You breathed your life in me And you have been so, so kind to me Welcome back to Tea Time with Elsie. And today I'm here with Alexandria and I have a really important question for you. What does it mean to trust Jesus? For me, it means to let him handle everything and then not doubt him. And how much should we trust him? A lot. And how much is a lot? Good question. What are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. If you had a One Direction concert ticket, but Jesus told you not to go because you're going to get into a horrible car accident, would you listen to him? That's a tough one. Allie! What? We're supposed to trust Him with our entire lives. That's a lot. As followers of Christ, we're supposed to put our trust into Him that He's going to guide us to make the right decisions. Maybe the story of Peter will help you. The Holy Tales Hello friends, I am Gumball. I live here in this huge library. This library is so big that I keep getting lost. But my friends, Tubby and Freckles, always find me. I'm kind of lost right now. There you are, Gumbo. We have been looking all over for you. Come on, let's go to Holy. It's story time. So you children are back! I was having the best dream ever! Hi, Holly! Now that you're up, you have to tell us a story from the Bible, please! Alright, alright! Now calm down! I will tell you all a wonderful story. Long ago, three of Jesus' closest disciples, Peter, John and James, went out fishing one night with a few other disciples. This was after Jesus had risen from death. They went fishing but came back empty-handed. As they brought in the boat, 
they saw a man waiting for them in the shore. He called out to them and asked them if they had caught anything. They replied saying that they were not able to catch any fish. Throw the net to starboard and you will catch some fish, said the man standing in the shore. They did as they were told and immediately the net was full of fish. John was the first to realize that the man standing on the shore was their beloved master. Peter looked across at the man on the shore and rushed to meet him. When they came ashore, Jesus was ready with bread and cooked fish for them. After they had eaten, Jesus asked Peter, Simon Peter, do you love me more than others do? Peter answered, Lord, you know I do, said Jesus. He asked Peter once again if he loved him. Peter said, Then feed my lambs. Jesus asked him the same question once again for the third time. Peter was upset that Jesus should ask him the same question so many times. You know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Then feed my sheep. When Jesus said this, Peter understood what Jesus meant. He realized that through these questions, he was free from the guilt and shame that he was suffering for denying his master when Jesus was taken to prison. So what food did Jesus keep ready for his disciples? I can answer this, Holy. He kept bread and cooked fish ready for them. That is absolutely right, Freckles. I want bread and fish too. Come on, Tubby. I will give you some. Bye, Holy. Thanks for the story. Hey kids, so today we're going to talk about Jesus reinstating Peter in the book of John chapter 21. So it starts on the Sea of Galilee, where seven disciples, including Simon Peter, Thomas, and Nathaniel, as well as a few others, are sitting at the shore. And we'll just call Simon Peter Peter, because that's pretty much his name. So Peter decides that he wants to go fishing, and the rest of the disciples follow him. John 21, 4 through 6 says, At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, Fellows, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, Throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Now, I don't know if you guys have gone fishing before, but my dad has told me that when you go for a whole day of fishing, you barely catch, like, maybe one or two fish, if you're lucky. And they caught 153 fish on that one time that they reeled in the net. So just imagine going fishing and not catching a single bit and then all of a sudden lifting your net up and you have a whole bucket full. It's crazy. So the craziest thing about that story to me is that Jesus had actually died not that long ago when this happened. He was crucified a little bit before Simon Peter and the rest of them were fishing. And so he appeared to Peter on the, sea, on the shore of the Sea of Galilee. In fact, they didn't even recognize him at first. And so, after they grabbed all the fish, one of the disciples told Peter that it was the Lord, and Peter immediately put his clothes back on and swam back to the shore. Now, if you guys didn't know, Jesus actually called Peter, Thomas, and Nathaniel to be fishers of men when he was alive. And before he died, he told them to, that he will meet them on the Sea of Galilee after he rose from the dead. And now that's pretty much where we're at. So... Peter gets to the shore and he sits with Jesus, while the others are reeling in the boat and pulling the giant net of fish and lug it onto where Peter and Jesus are at. So, John 21, 9 says, When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've caught, Jesus said. As they all sat around the fire and ate breakfast, Jesus asked Peter an odd question. Well, it may not be odd to us, but it was odd to him. He asked Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Of course, Peter said, yes, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. And then he asked him a second time. He said, Simon, son of, son of John, do you love me? And Peter said the same thing. Yes, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. And again he asked Peter if he loved him. This time Peter felt kind of hurt. 
And, I mean, I personally couldn't blame him because Peter has proved time and time again to Jesus that he does love him and he trusts him. I mean, when Jesus called him to walk out of the boat on, on the sea, Peter followed him. He was a bit reluctant at first, but he still did it. And anyone would feel hurt in that situation if someone that they knew loved them was constantly questioning it. I mean, if my parents came up to me and repeatedly asked me, do you love me? I would say, of course I do. Like, what makes you think that I don't? Well, Peter tells Jesus, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And that's when it hits. Jesus was asking Peter constantly if he loved him and to feed his lambs and his sheep because he wanted Peter to go out and be the kind of shepherd for followers of God. The sheep were the other people in the world that Peter was supposed to be a disciple for. And what Jesus says to Peter is beautiful. In John 21, 18, he says, I tell you the truth. When you were young, you did as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. This shows that we have to put our entire faith into God, the way Peter did afterwards. Jesus wanted Peter to know that he's trusting him and he wants, to, he wants Peter to be a disciple for the world and not just Jesus. And even though we're so used to doing things ourselves, we have to trust him with our lives and decisions. Peter then asked about the disciple that betrayed Jesus. What about him, Lord? He asked. And Jesus told Peter, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? As for you, follow me. What this tells us is that we have to trust Jesus. Even though Judas betrayed Jesus and basically got him crucified, Jesus told Peter not to be worried about him, not to be concerned. Everything goes according to God's plan, and that's what Jesus was trying to tell Peter. And that's what God is telling us now. That's what he wants us to do. We have to put our lives in his hands and trust that he will help us make the right decisions. Even though those decisions might not be the ones we want, trusting him is the best we could do to be happy. It took Peter a long time le to learn that, but he did. He trusted God and became a faithful servant, just as we should. Make sure to download the activity sheets in the description below, and if you have any prayer requests, you can email us at lighthouse at plaog.net. Have a good week. So, do you see now? I do. Even if we doubt Jesus, we have to trust in him with everything. Like Jesus told Peter, what happens to Judas is up to God. He makes the decisions, not us. The best we can do is trust that Jesus will give us the heart to make the right ones. Absolutely. That goes for you guys, too. Thanks for tuning in, too. Tea time, time with Elsie. What does it mean to trust God? Me, too. How much is a lot of bit? A lot? I don't remember what I say after that. That's a good question. <laughs> what are we talking about? Sorry. I can't remember. We're supposed to trust him with our <laughs> entire life. Oh. I don't remember what I say. You're recording. No? Yeah. What were we talking about? I can't do it. You have to trust in Jesus with everything. <laughs> <laughs> so do you... <laughs> Sorry. Okay. <laughs> yeah, even if we doubt Jesus, we have to trust in him with... Stop laughing at me! So Peter, what happens you just have to go? <laughs> Mouse squeaky to like, thunderous <laughs> deep voice. No, oh, somebody! Ah. Wait, re-go. I mean, restart. Even if we doubt Jesus, we... Okay, go. Do you want to redo that? Yep. <laughs> so, do you see? Now, do it again. Keep freestyle down, sir. Yeah, you're right. We have to even. If... Okay, go again. <laughs> okay, go again. Okay, okay go again. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's funnier when my eyes are full. And that's it.